So what I'd like to do is introduce Rai Jones from the Linux Foundation. Uh, Rai will be walking you through the various activities today. Um, and if you are uh, not speaking, if you wouldn't mind putting your phone on mute and then just taking it off if you have any questions. And with that, I'll hand it over to Rai. Thank you, Todd. Um, today I want to cover a quick intro here to Garrett for people who wish to contribute to Hyperledger. Um, I sent out an email just a little bit ago um, asking that you set up a local uh, Git client. So if you've done so, could you say that you have in the chat window? It isn't a big deal if you haven't. So this is your uh, This is Git, which I assume that everyone is familiar with for the purposes of this call. And as you can see, I have nothing checked out. And uh, the project that we're working with is LF Sandbox. So if you have set everything up, you may go to the, uh, to the Garrett page for Hyperledger, go to Projects, List, LF Sandbox, and then you'll have a number of options here uh, for the way that you can check this out. For me, it is easiest if I clone it with the commit hook and SSH. I would copy it to your clipboard and then go to your git window and run that command. I have already done that here. Uh, if you have not, uh, you may do that now. The main difference with, uh, between Git and Garrett is that in Garrett we do not have uh, pull requests. Uh, what you do are you propose patches or changes. So any individual change may have multiple patches. Um, so for instance, this change only has uh, one patch, which you can see here. And the, uh, the change, much like GitHub, you, you, you can see the difference between your, your base patch, which is I'm adding a file, so there's nothing in, in the base, and what you have proposed to change. So Craig, is that Craig who said that you had this checked out? Could you, uh, if you wanted to check out a Pending change, you could go here to a patch that has your, your name in it, and you will have a, uh, a list of patches, and then how you would download that. So if you wanted to download this and make changes, if, if you wanted to uh, update this, you would click here to cherry pick it. And then you could go here, paste it, and you will see that this is uh, a straightforward uh, git command. And now if I do a git log, you will see that I have, I'm in this detached state, I have the uh, text file for Craig. And if you, uh, wish to make additional edits and uh, changes, you could at this point. But let's look back here to the, uh, to the Garrett UI. If you are logged in, which uh, I suppose that you all are, um, you would be able to reply to any pending change. So this is uh, very much like you would in GitHub how you make comments about uh, changes or pull requests. So, for instance, you come in here and notice that, at, that Craig doesn't have his name, and so what you might do is insert a comment here which says, needs actual names. We'll see that it is in the draft status, which means that it is not published and no one else can see that. 
So if you go back to the change, uh, it is, again, you'll see that your comment is draft. So then I would reply and say this, and that you have three options to, uh, to score the pinning change. Um, one is the, uh, the code review, which is, I would prefer this not to be merged, or I have no opinion, or it looks good to me. Um, all of this is very similar to GitHub, if you are familiar. And in this case, it is, it is not good. Verified is similar, but this is for uh, code review. So if you thought that the code uh, in a change that you were reviewing was uh, subpar, or you had comments about the structure of the code, or it didn't, it didn't compile, you would set that to negative one. Uh, this will usually be set, this score will usually be set by uh, either Jenkins or uh, the other builder, Travis. So you won't usually have reason to set this, but you might if you try to compile it and it doesn't compile, uh, you could say that it is not verified. And then you would post your comments and you will notice that the, uh, the code review is now negative one. If we go back to the main UI for the project, you'll see that this has a code review of negative one. And if you are logged in, uh, please feel free at this point to log in and take a look at any of these changes and make comments or vote on them. What I will show you here is, is the second stage. After you have uploaded a change uh, and you wish to have people review it, you can either add them one by one. Oops. Uh, I don't remember your uh, email address off the top of my head. Or you can add a group, which is LF Garrett class. And it adds everyone that signed up for the, uh, for the class with their Garrett account. All five of you uh, should have just gotten an email saying that you've been added. And what you would notice is if you went to the uh, My Changes page, you will see that you, ha you, you will have an incoming review now for, uh, for this text file. This is very similar uh, to the way in GitHub where you may tag people uh, with an issue or tag people on a pull request. So in general, you would be uh, following the same workflow where you'd be adding either uh, distinct sets of people or you would be adding uh, a specific person that you wanted to have review a uh, code request, a uh, patch. If you wanted to uh, change your vote, you've reconsidered, you are able to go in through the UI and either re-reply and reset your code review or you may simply delete your vote. You'll notice that the code review is now unset. If you look at the UI, you'll see that it is uh, unset. I see we have a review, so let's take a look. It looks like Craig has uh, given it a plus one. So Craig, if you could, go here and check this out and uh, edit the file. I, I will walk you through how to edit a change, someone else's change. So I will do this with uh, the change for my file. And uh, Craig, I assume that you will do something very similar uh, in your window. So what I will do here is reset so that we we are in the empty repo state because it is not particularly interesting to carry on there. So this this is the 
the key difference, this is the step um, that is the, the, the big difference between GitHub and Garrett. So what I, what I see is that uh, I have this file and it doesn't actually have my name. So that's not helpful. So what I will do is edit the file just using whatever editor you choose. And unlike GitHub, um, what I will do is amend the commit. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying that I want to commit all of my changes. Um, I wish to amend the previous commit. And I wish to sign the commit. This is also another step which is uh, important and I will circle back to in just a bit. So I will just do this part and what we will see is that we are uh, presented with the same uh, commit message that we had before. And I will say uh, this. So when you are pushing to Garrett, you will be pushing to a special uh, type of target, which is refs for branch. So in this case, we're working on master branch. So we will push to refs for master. And if we go back and look at my change, you'll see we have, we have one patch and the commit message is as it was when I checked out. But then when I do this push to rest for master, because my commit message has the same change ID in it, and that change ID is given to you when you, uh, when you do the git checkout with the uh, commit hook. So that change ID comes from the commit hook. Because it, the, the uh, message has the change ID in it, when you do the push, you'll see that the, what we get is a message that says we have updated the changes. And if we go back to the UI and refresh, what we'll see is we've the commit message has changed and we now have a second patch. So again, this is distinct from the way that GitHub allows you to, uh, to do work on a PR. So if we go in here and take a look, what we'll see is by default, the difference between the base commit and where we are now. But if you were particularly interested in what the changes were that were made by someone else, you can change the patch set that you are doing a diff with. And as you see, this shows the difference between uh, patch one and two. Another, uh, the primary uh, piece of work would have, of course be uh, pushing new commits. So and as opposed to updating existing ones. So we can do that uh, here. And I will just uh, get back here to the beginning. And all of this is straightforward uh, git work, uh, which you, uh, which you are, uh, should be well familiar with. So if I do a git log, uh, you'll, you will notice that I have a change ID, but what I don't have in comparison to the previous commit is I don't have a signature. So if I push this, because the change ID is new, it should create a new, uh, it should create a new change set, but it should be rejected because it is not signed. So this is uh, familiar to you if you are working on GitHub. 
you will have noticed that uh, we have the DCO bot, which is making sure that you've uh, assigned your commits. So this is the same workflow, even though the, uh, the error comes a little bit earlier. So what you can do is amend your commit and just use a dash S and that inserts the proper signed off by. And then when you push, you'll see this, which is that it has created a new change. So if we go to the UI and reload, you'll see that we have another uh, another change and it is waiting for uh, Jenkins to come through and mark it as verified or for it to come through and mark it as unverified. Craig, were you able to get to a point where you uploaded a second patch? Looks like the answer is no. That's fine. Uh, does anyone have any questions to this point? Are any, any differences between the GitHub and Garrett workflow that I could focus on a little bit more? Okay, well, I will go through just a little bit more of the, uh, the Garrett workflow where it is distinct from GitHub. And one thing that you can do uh, is you can abandon your, uh, your changes if you decide that this is not a uh, change that is worthy of your, your continued effort. You, you may just click abandon and put in a message. is now abandoned. You most frequently do that if you are working on the wrong branch. Um, if you had a branch that was for a release or something of that nature, you could, at this point, you could cherry pick it, pick it to a new branch. Uh, I won't go through with the cherry pick right now. The, the, uh, the remaining stuff that you can do is, uh, let's see, you don't really do, uh, we don't really do topic branches, but there is nothing preventing you from doing that. This is very similar to a lightweight feature branch. Um, if the Hyperledger project starts doing topic branches, I can circle back around and uh, touch this up a little bit. So, I will add, I will, I will show you a little bit of the reviewer workflow, which is, uh, for the most part, not uh, something that everyone is going to need to do, but I will go back here and So now, hopefully, if I reload this page, I will have additional options. So this is what you will see if you are a committer. And that is that you can put a roadblock in front of a change. And once you have voted negative two, uh, you cannot be overridden. Uh, other committers could come in and delete your votes but no automated process is going to be able to uh, delete your vote or vote on your behalf. Furthermore, um, if you happen to, if the, uh, if the person who owns this patch set happens to uh, push up a new version of it, it should not remove the negative two vote. So I will show you that here.
So what we should have now is patch set three with a negative two vote. Nope, I guess that's because uh, I'm the person who voted on it, so I overrode my own vote. Oh no, okay. So patch set three does actually still have a negative two. The votes are, are promoted. Um, if you are here as well, if you are a committer, you are allowed to vote to merge and set the verify bit to verified and post, and then you will have a new button, button here, which is to submit. And once you do that, the, the change is merged. If we go over here and take a look, you will see that we have uh, quite a few patches in, in progress over here on LF Sandbox. If you uh, are logged into the Garrett UI now, um, feel free to go into the LF uh, Sandbox in the Garrett UI on the web page and uh, take a look at that. Um, you should have the ability to mark your the changes uh, as approved and merge them as you wish. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Right, this is Jeremy Fred. Uh, I don't know if you covered it previously or not, but um, would it be possible? Um, the significance of verified, does that, uh, as a, as opposed to the code review, is that just sort of arbitrary steps in a workflow that can be customized? Um, verified is usually uh, restricted to being set by uh, the automated processes. So uh, a build job on Jenkins would usually be the piece that sets the verified bit. Um, however, uh, for right now, we don't have Jenkins running through the LF sandbox verifying things. Um, verified is usually this code builds or this uh, text file completely renders or whatever the, the check-in gate is that the working group has set up. The code review block is not code review, it's for the content of the change. Um, there may be additional uh, blocks here, so I will show you. Uh, so on this uh, other project, you'll notice that we have an SR column which is the security review column. So it may be that other uh, working groups add more columns and somewhere in here there's another column. Uh, I don't remember what it is. We don't have any open changes with it, so it doesn't matter. But as the projects uh, wished, uh, they can add columns or they can have columns added. So you could have uh, for instance, a localization column, which says that all the localization has been done uh, or something of that nature. Does it answer your question or did I go off on a tangent? No, no, that, that, that does, that's, that's, that's great. Is it, is it possible to control who uh, or, or uh, sort of uh, govern who can, who can do which approvals? It, uh, it is, uh, in fact, uh, this particular project I have set up so that uh, just for purposes of illustration, it is uh, very close to wide open. Usually people's ability to uh, vote is severely restricted, um, especially on something like this where uh, we will have uh, Jenkins coming through and verifying. You would typically only want to vote that you've verified in a, in a particularly uh, in a bad case uh, if for some reason the verify job was failing uh, when it shouldn't be failing or something of that nature. And I don't know if you were here to see that uh, earlier uh, when I had not uh, upgraded everyone here, uh, the only options available for code review were you know negative one through one and the same for verified. Uh, but when I made everyone a committer, plus two became available. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. Okay. Um, that's, so that, that's great. Yeah. So in the default, uh, in the default view, 
basically you could you could do CR plus one or minus one, and only committers can do uh, plus two or minus two. And someone, uh, anyone, I I could go through and vote negative one on everything here with just having a Garrett account, but it is provisional. All the minus one and plus one, uh, it doesn't get you. Two plus ones aren't a plus two. So it doesn't get you any closer to actually getting your commit merged other than it's it's nice. It's it's letting people know that you've looked. Oh, I see. I see. So the the fact that it's numeric is sort of not really not really the the case, if you will. Sure. It's uh I again I will go back to uh other project. Let me take a look. So, for instance, on this change, you'll notice that Joshua Spain has given it a CR plus one, and it looks like he had a couple of uh, comments as well. Uh, so, this is this is where Josh has made some code review comments, and it looks like uh, Christian has has replied. Um, usually on this project, and please keep in mind that every project gets to set their own rules, um, people will typically code review uh, plus one and wait 24 hours for any objections or any substantive uh, comments to come in. And then one of the committers um, who, for this particular project, would be uh, Dan, Greg, Kevin, and Marcello and, and Way, uh, they could come in later and merge it. There's nothing other than social uh, convention preventing them from merging immediately. Understood. But if, 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 for example, we wanted to say draw a line between uh, sort of like the rule set that goes for stuff that's in incubation versus the rule set for stuff that's in uh, mature mature for projects it sounds like that, that's something that we could do yes absolutely um, the the project rules uh, it uh, Garrett has a very uh, rich rules engine and pretty much anything that you need expressed uh, can be um, there's no there it's just like git in that there, there is no Git workflow, right? There, Git supports many workflows. And Garrett is very similar in that you could make an arbitrarily complex or uh, wide open set of rules around who can commit and who cannot, com who cannot commit or comment for that instance. Right, right, that makes sense. And it looks like there's, uh, uh, there's OAuth and, and uh, some sort of hash IDs for the for the the uh, users and the code or content respectively. So you sort of know, well, like you know, I assume that that change ID, for example, that's showing on the screen, that's essentially a a hash of the thing that the thing that is uh, either being changed or the combination of it and the what it's applied to. So it's uh, you can not only be sure of who, who approved, but of what they approved. Um, so, sort of. The the commit ID here, it, this, this is a, a git commit ID, right? That is a hash. The change ID is distinct from the commit ID in that the, the change ID uh, is constant for a change. So, no matter how many uh, patches you submit, let me go back to mine, that I already merged. So all of these patches, one, two, and three, uh, had the same change ID. And that is so that if you make comments, you can go through and see the changes across uh, patches. I can see that the, my comments were addressed. Mm -hmm. So the, the change ID is generated when you do the checkout with the change ID, um, which I will show you because I believe you joined after I showed this. So this is, this is the commit hook piece of this. And this commit hook, wait, 
uh, this, this hook slash commit message. This is just a shell script. And you can go look at how that is generated. This is a 191 line shell script. Mm -hmm. um, but it is, it is right there for you to, to take a look at if you have any questions on exactly how that commit message is generated or how the commit, how the change ID is generated. Well, I, I guess it's it's just sort of the the the, the broader question of you know if, if we're building uh, if if we're if we're looking at building software that's going to control money uh, and other high value things, um, it sounds like you know GitHub GitHub's not sufficient for locking it down. So people go to Garrett, and then Garrett gives you some workflow and some. Uh, uh, entitlements around changes and some tracking of that, and uh, a piece of that is is at least is tied into uh, OAuth and uh, SSH at least for the the back and forths. Um, because I guess the question would be then is um, uh, you know say somebody downloads a version of of, our, of, Hyper, of Hyperledger and starts running it, um, will they have uh, IDs, that, hash IDs that they can check to make sure that what they've got is what we think they should have? Sure, example, and, and, um, and that, that would be, I mean, that is exactly, I don't know if I have any changes uh, checked out right now, but it, I mean, that is the, the hash ID, the, right, I mean, this, Right, so this is like the hash ID on the on the, the patch for the, that piece of the source, and then there'd be yeah. a quick. And so it sounds like this is a a, a, a strong step beyond beyond uh, what GitHub provides straight out of the box, in terms of locking down our code base. Uh, it is. I I believe that um, uh, the the largest uh, motivator here is that we get this uh, for free. So instead of having DCO bot run around behind and approve all the changes, um, if you try to push an unsigned change, it will just be rejected. Um, furthermore, any of the uh, the changes that led up to to this being your your commit hash um, are still tracked in the uh, in the public web UI, so you can go and look. And verify uh, where where this came from. So you can look for this change ID and see what its history was. If I go to the uh, the UI here and search for that, it should take me back to the same page. But um, Yes, you, you can verify uh, exactly what it is that you have and what it is that you suppose that your user has. Nice. Nice. And and presumably, if, if we start treating documentation as code or as, as checked in things, then we can get the same for say like HTML pages or PDF or whatever else format the docs are in? Sure, it's a little bit um, trickier with um, PDFs only because they don't render so well um, as source code because they're, you know, they're binary-ish. Um, but yes, if you were to uh, check on HTML, it will, it will do a diff or uh, YAML or, you know, MD, whatever it is that you're you're using to control your documentation. It will it will show that there's a difference. And if if it's binary, if you have included JPEGs or PNGs or something of that nature, um, then it will show you that there is a difference. But it doesn't display in the UI exactly what the difference is. So there's a little bit more work to do to see. Sure. But yeah, you you can and I, I think probably should track your your documentation. Uh, in in Git 
at, you know, just as any other part of the product. Right, right. And so that might suggest that at some point we start migrating stuff out of the wiki, for example, or consider it at least. That would be a consideration for uh, the, the working group. Um, you could, uh, wikis have, uh, wikis are, are good in some ways, right, because the, the barrier to entry is much lower. Um, so that that is a, this is a conversation that the working group um, is, is going to have to have about if they want it in if they want the documentation in a wiki another thing that you could do um, would be to, to run essentially an extraction on the wiki and have a bunch of uh, whatever the, the the base format of the wiki file is um, export that and check that in and then people could do the same process in the wiki and say if I download this and, and do a hash is it the same hash as is checked into GitHub or uh, Garrett? And then you could do the reverse as well. Um, you could have a wiki where you're doing your edits and then have that saved in Garrett and then extracted for a read-only uh, presentation. Again, that's something very similar to what we do uh, over at Allseen Alliance. You can, I, I will show you. So, for instance, this is an edit that Jared made on the onboarding guide. And this eventually, uh, once it's approved and the release is approved, will end up on the web page. If you were to go to the All Saint Alliance web page, this, this will generate HTML, which will be shown to people. And, and it's read-only in the presented format, but anyone, again, is able to... Uh, log in and and propose changes. These these changes all happen to come from people that are part of the of the uh, companies that are working on that, but there's no restriction there. Pretty much anybody can upload a change or propose a change. Right, that makes sense and then presumably just as with docs, the test test cases, automated testing some of that could be put into this as well. Absolutely. Uh, so this, that would be something similar to, uh, I assert that it would be something similar uh, to these changes which are made to the CI management repo right now for Hyperledger and this is standing up uh, the Jenkins uh, instance. So I don't know exactly what's in this change, so let's take a look. Uh, not much fixing the path. Um, this is just YAML and uh, any you know any text uh, format could be in here. So provided your text cases are specified and and something that people can read, then sure you could just make it such that make it part of your process that you edit those through Garrett changes as opposed to uh, through any other changes. Gotcha. Nice. Does anyone else have any questions or was there anything that I should cover in more depth? I guess with that, I... Uh, We'll give everyone 20 minutes of their uh, morning back then. Thank you for your time. <laughs>